um, this is such a special day for all of you, but more importantly, it's a special day for women as a whole. Um, I'm always grateful when we can honor uh, women who have, have bucked the system and managed to get it done uh, from, from around the world. I, I not only, it, it gives me great uh, inspiration every time I have the opportunity and the honor of meeting uh, the women that I have been able to meet through uh, WDN and through the IRI as well. Um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm so pleased to be here as part of the empowerment uh, and memory of Jean Kirkpatrick. Uh, as Honorary Chair of uh, Women's Defense Network Council, I, it's, it's composed of, an, of American women leaders in, in the private and public sector, and I applaud all of them for taking their time and their, and their uh, responsibility with this. Uh, today we have 61 countries that are involved in WDN that are striving to be involved in the political process, women that want to be a part of the solution, not the problem. The WDN Council wholeheartedly supports the network's work to promote and achieve women's leadership in politics, governance, and civil society. During my own professional career, I have always put a specific focus on women's political and economic empowerment. And I believe that the Women's Democracy Network leads in this effort. WDN connects women from around the world to their best resource, one another. It is vitally important to do this. Despite the fact that women com com comprise half of the world's population, they still continue to be underrepresented in the very decision-making bodies which provide a voice for their citizens. As a result of WDN's work, women have run for office, have been appointed to gover government positions, promoted in their political parties, and established NGOs to advance women's empowerment, and most of all, increase transparency and accountability. They have become leaders in their own communities and are making sure that the voices of women around the world are being heard. Thank you for doing that. Um, I have watched personally and experienced personally several African countries as they were trans transformed due to women. I'll cite Rwanda as being one of them. Um, I had the misfortune or fortune, I look at it both ways, of being in Rwanda during the genocide. And to see what occurred then and what is happening now in that beautiful country is mind boggling. And it is due to women solely due to women. I'm inspired by the members of parliament who are with us today. And I know you are making a difference not only for women and girls in your country, but for the entire global community. I am certain that you are the women who are shaping the future in your own countries. Please be confident that WDN will continue assisting you as you strive to build strong democratic institutions and practices in your countries. And now it is my great pleasure and my honor to present two remarkable women with the Jean Kirkpatrick Award for their work to advance women around the world. Her Excellency, President of Finland, Tarja Halonen, was the 11th president of the Republic of Finland and Finland's first female head of state. She was sworn into office March, of two, March 1 of 2000 and was re-elected in 2006. This is a remarkable statistic. During her tenure, her approval ratings t tipped 88%. 88%. <laughs> We kind of live by those approval numbers in my house, and I've never, we've never seen those numbers. <laughs> I'm very jealous of you. <laughs> the president is widely known as a steadfast defender of human rights. Issues concerning democracy, civil society, social justice, and the promotion of equality have been central themes throughout her political career. Having recently left office, she continues to advance women's empowerment. From March of 2009 until September 2014, Her Excellency served as the chair of the Council of Women World Leaders, established in 1996. 
President's political interest was sparked early on, and it is impressive that she served in Helsinki, it served in the Helsinki municipality for five terms and in the parliament for four terms, occupying leadership positions in the parliamentary committees and serving as Minister of Social Affairs, Health Minister of Ju Social Affairs and Health, Minister of Justice, and Minister of Foreign Affairs. <coughs> President Hallinan is recognized as an international leader. She served as co-chair of the World Commission on Social Dimension of Globalization and co-chair of the UN Secretary General's high-level panel on global sustainability. She continues her international engagement and currently serves as the co-chair of the high-level task force on interna oh, international, pardon me, I'm sorry, ma'am, I'm, I'm sorry, high-level task force on international conference on population and development. That's a mouthful, but it's very important. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> there is a wonderful story told by the president herself about a boy who once asked whether he could run for president in Finland. The boy responded that he didn't think that he could because boys can't be president in Finland. <laughs> this is a reflection of the impact our president has had. Please join me in welcoming and congratulating uh, President Hallinan of Finland. So, dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, uh, yes, we need also men. That's why UN has a campaign, he for she. We both make to together 100%. So, you can see that I'm truly honored to be here with you today and, and to receive this prestigious Jean Kirkpatrick Award. I know that my predecessors there, and it makes me very, very modest. Uh, I would like also thank Chairwoman Cindy McCain and the Women's Democracy Network for this honor, and also congratulate already beforehand, in a way, my sister Oyin Sanya Suren of Mongolia for her work and achievements, and I'm sure we are working together in the future. I'm especially pleased to receive the award this year, as 2015, will be a very, very significant year for all of us. So in 2015, the world community had its September meeting at the United Nations should, and I believe will, determine the goals of sustainable development for the next 15 years. So at Rio Plus 20 Summit, like it was mentioned, I was there a few years ago, we were unanimous in, uh, in the agreement that in order to achieve economic growth, which is both inclusive and also respects planetary boundaries, and we need further develop our human capital. Globally speaking, we know that it has not happened in the past. Globally speaking, the poor, the young, and the women have been mostly excluded, and we need the human capital. So um, the Sustainable Development Goals agenda should now be very clear, particularly on the role of the status of women and girls. And this, of course, is a matter of justice, but it's also a smart economic investment. Finally, it's being acknowledged that the empowerment of women and girls is one of the keys to advancing the resilience and sustainability of the societies, while at the same time being a positive factor for the global economic growth. So, when you mention this very long name, normally we make it much shorter. We say ICPD, and it's easier. It's an UN sign. 
But it's very important because that contains also those human rights that we don't speak so often. They are sexual and reproductive health and rights to everybody. Education, anyway, is the basis of the development. And we have already made some very good steps forward in educational progress, but we still have a great deal more to accomplish. This is one way to increase women in decision-making. As women, we need to enjoy every single success. Let's be happy for them. But we also need continuity and networking. I'm very happy to see women receive awards like this while participating in this common cause of ours across political party lines. We need to engage the cooperation of women from different, different political parties and other movements to work together in order to advance gender equality, both within our nations, but also worldwide. So as the world celebrates International Women's Day, it is important to remember that we need this engagement and cooperation today, and we will continue to need it in the future. But I have my sincere trust we will do it. So my warm thanks to all of you for recognizing me with this award. And we finish out like that, never mind. So um, uh, I want to give one book to you, Erika, uh, because this is the 100 social innovations from Finland. And this is like a cookbook. We all know what we are doing cookbook. <laughs> we are reading it like that, and we said, hmm, that sounds good, but perhaps I, put the, I, I would like to put a little bit ginger more here. And this is the same way whether you are speaking about economic autonomy of the student unions or the motherhood package or what else. And uh, then the second I will give at the table to you, my sister, uh, because um, we don't perhaps see so well uh, so often, but we will meet it in the future. But the others of you, you are staying in Washington. I don't give this because we have an excellent ambassador here. And uh, <laughs> Madame Koukouronde has promised to me that she is available. Just contact her and see we give these books for you. And you, we all know that which kind of the soups we will do for the future in the society. Thank you very much. Okay. Come out then. Do I take it with me? Okay. Yes. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Thank you. That I don't break it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Our second honoree today, I am thrilled and thrilled to introduce a member of parliament of Mongolia, Oy Oyun Sanjasiran. She was elected as a member of parliament first in 1998 and is serving her fourth term. During that period, she also served as foreign affairs minister, minister of environment and green development. But most importantly, she was at the launch of the parliamentary women's caucus in 2012. I am proud to say that WDN was there to support it from the very beginning through bringing in best practices of leadership and political participation from the global network. It is significant to mention that the Women's Caucus members represent five different political parties, five different political parties, and they get along, so I hear. We could learn something from that. <laughs> Leaving the partisan differences behind, the caucus members address the top priorities for the citizens of Mongolia. I should also mention that IRI has a long history of democracy and governance assistance in Mongolia, with more than 20 years of working together with such leaders as Oyun. 2015 marks the 25th anniversary of Mongolia's democratic revolution, and throughout this time, IRI has continuously worked in Mongolia with parliament, political parties, and the General Election Commission. 
Today, Mongolia is viewed as a positive democratic example in the region and looks to share its experience of successful political transformation with other countries in the region. In addition to all of her daily duties, Oyun is the founder and leader of the Civil Will Green Party of Mongolia. She also heads the Zorig Foundation, a prominent Mongolian NGO that is widely known for advancement of democracy, promotion of good governments, youth education, and community development. And last but not least, she is, she is actively involved in the cause of children with disabilities, serving as the chair of the Special Olympics Committee of Mongolia. You and I have something in, in common with that. It is impressive that Oyun was not a politician, but first ran for elected office in her late brother's constituency in 1998, following his tragic murder. Oyun's brother was one of the main pro-democracy leaders in the 1990s and was a respected statesman and cabinet member. MP Oyun sought to carry out his legacy through her, through a, through her own political aspirations. It is my great honor to welcome Oyun to the stage. Thank you very much, Madame McCain, for very encouraging and supportive words, both about Mongolia, but also about myself. And I would like to thank you, Women Democracy Network, first of all, for support, for very loyal support, and International Republican Institute, as it was mentioned, since 1992, you've been a very loyal supporter of Mongolia's democracy, and I think it's very, very important. Of course, I'm Absolutely delighted, surprised, um, but it's a great honor for me to receive this very prestigious award. It gives me a lot of encouragement and a lot of motivation, which is very important for women. And we were discussing this morning during the panel that uh, often it's, um, even unconsciously, there is so much discrimination against women, both from women ourselves and the men, and they don't even know that they're looking down at women, and that's why this encouraging, motivating um, honor, and the award is very important for me personally, but also for Mongolian women and for all the women around the world. So thank you very much for WDN, IRI, and all the uh, distinguished guests here that were supporting this cause. I was asked to uh, share a bit of a personal story. As uh, Madame McCain mentioned, Mongolia is marking the 25th anniversary of the democratic changes. Like many post-communist countries, Mongolia in 1990 uh, also started pro-democracy and pro-market economy reforms. And the current president, Mr. Elbeg Dorj, current president of Mongolia, the current, our capital city, Ulaanbaatar's mayor, Batul, and my late brother, Zorik, and many other brave young men actually called for changes in Mongolia, and they were very, very successful, and they led this democratic movement. And um, of course, we have gone a long way since then. We've made a lot of economic, political, social transformations, but also, I think, mentality, our mentality has changed. And it was during these transition times that I've learned one of my biggest lessons in my life. Uh, you can imagine, you know, 70 years, Mongolia was completely isolated country. You know, we had 70 years of communism. Uh, some of you may know we were, we were the second communist country in the world after Russia, <laughs> so in, since 1921. And then, so for 70 years, we were very isolated. The whole world for us was Soviet Union and Eastern Europe. That's where our, the borders finished for the world for us. So when in 1990, with the successful transition and democracy movement, when Mongolia opened up for the first time, one of our main wishes was to go and see the rest of the world, to see what's be beyond the borders. And um, so uh, I was also uh, one of those young people that wanted to see and travel. So I asked my English teacher, David, 
uh, he was from the UK, whether he can um, find me a babysitting work in London, because it was very maybe exciting to improve my English and maybe to see the world. So my uh, teacher, David, back home for holidays and came back uh, with two application forms, one for Imperial College of London and the other was for Cambridge University. <laughs> and of course, those days there was no internet, no online application forms, so we just filled them physically and posted them. And um, so I was very lucky. It happened that I was the first Mongolian to apply to a Cambridge University. Because it was so isolated, I was also lucky that they didn't know how to interview me. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I just got this letter. I was just asking for one year, maybe, taught course. And they said, we don't actually provide taught courses in earth sciences. That was my background. And said, OK, you can come for a PhD. And I would have never really applied or never thought of applying for something like this because I thought, oh, it's, it's so much higher than me. And I probably will never be able to do that. But uh, just because my teacher told me, uh, uh, oh, encouraged me to apply, I ended up doing the PhD. And um, um, <laughs> thank you. So that taught me that. You know, it's very important, especially for women, because women tend to underestimate ourselves. And you can read it everywhere, and we were discussing that as well. And it's very important, you know, to be brave, taking up more risks in our lives, and believing in ourselves. So that was the, uh, one of the main lessons that I learned. So I would like to encourage women, you know, to be brave and, you know, to go for it. And so I was working at the, um, then after my PhD, I was working for a mining company in the UK. And, uh, as it was mentioned, a big tragedy happened where my brother, who was the, one of the main democracy leaders and the politician, he was unfortunately murdered. And his case is still not resolved until now. And that actually led me to politics 16 years ago. And it also led me to call for cleaner politics, for more transparent, for more open politics, for good governance. And to be honest, it, I was one of the very lonely voices then, in 1998, 1999. And Tom Garrett from IRI, he was in Mongolian those days. And, um, but again, since those 2000s, Mongolia has progressed quite a long way. I was one of the first to declare voluntarily my income and asset declaration to the public and calling other MPs to do so. And, Many laughed at me, but by now it's a norm. Everybody has to declare their assets and uh, incomes. And by now we have very good anti-corruption legislation, transparency legislations. We have in Freedom of Information Act. We also have a conflict of interest legislation approved. And uh, we also managed to do political and finance campaign finance reform. Of course. Still, there are a lot of challenges with implementation, but we have progressed a long, long way in the last 10 or so years. And I was co-sponsoring some of those bills or co-chairing some of these working groups on this good governance. And uh, when I was co-chairing election working group, um, we managed also to introduce women's quota for the first time in 2007. Of course, it couldn't be implemented because um, of not enough support from the male uh, members of parliament, but we managed to implement it in 2012, and that's why uh, the number of women went up from three out of 76 members of parliament to 11 in 2012 elections. And Erden Chimek, my colleague, member of parliament from Mongolia, she's with me today, and she's a very active leader of our women's caucus, so I would like to congratulate Erden Chimek as well. Mongolian women are generally very strong, and probably those who, of you who were in Mongolia, they know that. And traditionally, because it's a semi-nomadic livestock herding or nomadic pastoralism, and uh, Mongolians have to, or for centuries, lived uh, in nature, and they had to look after their herds throughout the year and in four seasons. So women, by nature, are very strong. So if you look at different um, reports like World Economic Forum's gender gap, is it called Global Gender Gap Report from 2014, we're doing relatively very well. For example, Mongolia ranks 10th 
on the Economic Participation and Opportunity Subindex and has closed its health and survival gender gap. And that's, uh, we're doing, we're 42nd out of 146 or so countries, but in uh, Asia Pacific, we're, sorry, we're 42 out of 140 or so countries, but in um, Asia Pacific, we actually rank the fourth after Philippines, Australia, and New Zealand. Um, wage equality for similar work indicator is the best country from the region, and uh, we also have a very good economic participation index as well. But the only index which we are lagging behind is political participation. You know, we are, I think, we are unfortunately 103rd out of 142 countries. So that's why I think it's very, very important, you know, that this award, which also um, recognizes improvement in political participation, is uh, very important for our Mongolian women politicians as well. So many pressing issues uh, we are facing, and uh, as President, former President of Finland, mentioning sister, thank you very much. So our um, president was uh, mentioning sustainable development goals and all these challenges currently the world is facing with environmental changes, but also with peace and security, with income and improving the livelihoods. I think it's very important for us women, but also men, young, and the senior generation to be involved, to be very active. Um, I strongly believe that individuals, political parties, NGOs, whoever, if they get involved, we can make a change. And I think it's very important because there are so many pressing issues still in the world that we have to tackle. So it gives me a lot of motivation and encouragement to continue. So thank you very much for this wonderful award. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Erika Weberite, Women's Democracy Network. On behalf of Women's Democracy Network and the International Republican Institute, I would like to thank you for honoring us with your presence. We are excited to award two outstanding individuals, Her Excellency President Tarja Halonen and Member of Parliament Oyun Sanjasurin, who are dedicating their lives to bettering the lives of others. I would also like to recognize the entire delegation of the Women's Democracy Network. And I would like you ladies to stand when I read your name and remain standing. Yorita Tabaku, Member of Parliament of the Republic of Albania. Voltana Ademi, Member of Parliament of the Republic of Albania. Zana Marianovic, Member of the House of Representatives the Upper House of the Parliament of the Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Gerardine Kosongo, Member of Parliament of the Democratic Republic of Congo. Wafa Bani Mustafa, Member of the Jordanian House of Representatives. Oyun Sanja Surin, Member of Parliament of Mongolia. Erdenechmeg Lufsan, Member of Parliament of Mongolia. Julia Tevez Kispe, Congresswoman of the Republic of Peru. Reem Masmoudi, Member of the House of the Assembly of the Representatives of the People of Tunisia. We are also honored by the presence of our 2013 Jean Kirkpatrick awardee, Salima Ahmad, who is founder of Bangladesh Women's Chamber of Commerce and Industry. You inspire us. You inspire us, thank you very much, uh, and you are role models to many. In closing, I would like to thank you all for your support, for coming and participating and showing your support to women's empowerment. I would like to thank Ms. Cindy McCain for giving us this honor. And I would like to thank, give specific thanks to, to Anna Karkani Roll, the Chief Diplomatic um, Korea, the chief uh, editor-in-chief of the Diplomatic Korea magazine, to WDN Council and entire IRI board, without whom this event would, would not be possible and our work would not be possible. And so last but not least, a reminder about the silent auction. And I would like to 
um, read uh, the names of those who won. Please stop at the table when you're leaving. Rachel Baer, Lufsan Erdenechemeg, Oyun Sanja Surin, Tanya Roberts, Mary Kate Costello, Lisa Winnick, Mary Kate Costello, and Kate Crudel. Thank you once again. This concludes our program. <laughs>